Jesus says, deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow me. Jesus wants you to follow him through some pretty thick situations. So we want to be disciples. We, we don't want to be uh, church goers or uh, hippie Christians or, or any scenes like Jesus freaks or something. No. We want to be disciples of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall Would you like to hear Carl and Sarah do a few songs? Hallelujah. I think it would be a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. I was living in San Francisco, uh, and I was married, I had a child, and we sold dope for a living. It was really hard on me, and I just, just had to go somewhere, and so I went to the ranch and hated it. All the Christians were just, you know, telling me about the love of the Lord all the time, and I just told them what I thought of the Lord, and that the Bible was a myth, and that I'd studied it in mythological studies. And, told them what I thought of Christianity, but they said, well, we love you. You can stay here as long as you want. And, and uh, that was really amazing, but, you know, I still, you know, I just kind of fell into the family. But blessed are ye poor, the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are ye that are hungry now, you shall be filled. Blessed are ye poor, the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are ye that are hungry now, you shall be filled. Oh, you shall be filled. You shall be filled. Oh, thank you, Lord. You shall be filled. The purpose of the Lighthouse Ranch, it's a place of spiritual growth for those of us that live here, primarily uh, building us up into men and women of God so that we might carry the gospel into all the world. And it's also a place of spiritual outreach where we reach out with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus talked about, hereby will the world know that you're my disciples by the love you have one to another. And that's how we can live in this communal situation, 120 people 
living on five acres in three or four homes. It's ridiculous. No one would try it. It wouldn't work unless we had the Lord because our, our personalities would clash and our interests would clash, our needs would clash, and we wouldn't be able to make it together. I just know it. I've been to other communes that, that weren't Christian and they just, they don't have the same kind of a feeling to them as this one does, the same kind of unity. We have what, we, what, what is called the Tri-City Advertiser, and it's an advertising shopper. We started that uh, in August of 1971. We have a donut shop, which started about six months later, and we make donuts and sell them door to door. We have what we call the belt ministry, and uh, they make belts here on the ranch and uh, wholesale them all over the country. And by this, we support ourselves. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice. Lord Jesus, we ask that you bless this food, this meal this afternoon. You bless our sisters who have worked so hard to prepare it, Father. Yes. Let your anointing rest on each and every soul here, Lord. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. They all said, Amen. The best thing about the communal living is it's like rocks in a tumbler. And there's just all these rocks rolling around in the tumbler, and they just bang the raw edges off each other. And they come out smooth stones. And that's how you come out of the ranch a very strong Christian in a very short period of time. Like I can't walk around grouchy for more than 10 minutes. I can't unless I go to my room and lock myself in. Because someone is going to notice. Someone is going to notice that Sarah is not happy or that Sarah is grouchy. And they're going to come up to me and they say, Sarah, what's the matter? You know, can we help you? Or is there something wrong? They'll pray with me. They'll do something. They won't let me be grouchy, you know. I have to learn to give. There's a closeness that's developed towards uh, your brothers and sisters, towards your, your family. And here I have a family of 120, 130. And it's beautiful. You know, there's just that bond of unity and love between all of us. In Romans 6, it says, Paul's writing to the church at Rome, and he says, Know ye not that, it, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. That's what we are answering 
to God, those of you that are going to be baptized today, answering that you are following and you are reckoning yourself to be dead with Christ and to be raised into a new life. And now, today, you are signifying that you died with Christ and you're walking in a new life with Him. Is Jesus your Savior? Amen. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because that's the testimony upon which you're going to be baptized. That Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. And, and this is what it's going to be all about. This is what it's going to be all about. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you've tried to be a halfway, middle of the road, standing on the fence type Christian. Has anyone tried that in here? Okay. How many of you has it worked? Does it work for anybody? You try and come to Jesus Christ halfway, and you'll be the most miserable individual this world has ever seen. You come to Him wholeheartedly and Wow, the whole change comes in. Christ comes in and begins to direct their life in a brand new path. I gave him my life and he took it. You know, and, he, and he lives inside of me. And my li From that point on, my life changed, you know. I mean, completely. It was, everything was different. You know, it was a whole new life. A whole new life. I'm happy. <laughs> it really was a physical thing. I mean, I felt it physically in that there was a change in my body and I felt something going into me. I felt it. I knew it. Like, like it was like from the tips of my toes to, to the top of my head, I could feel it just tingling inside of me. And it was the presence of the Lord and it came into me like it was poured into my heart and I, I felt it start at the center of me and just go out. And it was very real. It wasn't just, okay, the Bible says I'm saved now and I know it. But I felt it also. I just saw everything. All my life was just for nothing. You know, I just saw all the things, all the trips I was into were just incomplete. And I realized it, and I saw it, and I just realized that Jesus loved me. And I just opened up my heart, and I said, I want you in my life. So if you're tired of trips that aren't making it for you, 
If you're tired of yourself and the crazy things that you're up to, and you, see, you think you may be, maybe the reason you're here tonight is you're at the end of a long road. You're coming to a place of, man, you know, I've been hanging on for a long time, man, just trying to do my trip. But you realize your life isn't sold out for him. And you haven't made a complete turnaround, a complete other direction. Do it tonight. Do it tonight. The specific moment, I was in, I was in the chapel here at the ranch. This, it's a different building than it is now. And I was with two people, and one of them wasn't saved yet either. And one of them was saved, a brother named Timothy. And we were just praying, and it was late, and we were about to go to bed, and, and Timothy said, well, let's pray. And so we knelt down, or, or we sat down on the floor, and there were just three of us, and it was dark, and there was a fire going, and a candle, and it was just very beautiful. And he just started praying, and I was kind of listening to him, and kind of just feeling really peaceful and wonderful, you know, just, just the peace of the moment. And, and he just started saying things, and I just kind of halfway listening to them out of the corner of my mind, and, and he said things like, and ask Jesus into your heart. And I just kind of said, well, yeah, ask Jesus into my heart, and it happened. I mean, I didn't really even... You know, it wasn't any big effort or anything, and I didn't go up before the church or, or cry or anything. It just, I just kind of said it, yeah, that's, that's it. Asked Jesus into my heart, and he came and hasn't left. <laughs> All those burdens were just lifted up to him, you know. It was like he just kind of took me in his hands and lifted all the burdens away, and now I was his. Well, my life is in his hands, in God's hands, is in his hands. Oh, my life is in his hands, in God's hands, life is in his hands. You know, you can't let me down, I can't let you down, and that is why I love him so. My life, oh, my life, in God's life is in his hands. Go down my life, into my life, the world my life, And you find my life, that you need life, some kind of helping hand life, You just ask life, Jesus in You'll be life, right there my life, my life, Oh my life It's in God's life hand is in his hands. You know my life, life is in his hands. It's in God's hand Life is in his hands. Oh my life, life is in his hand Life is in his hands. Well, now you can't pick me down. Yeah, I can't keep him down. And that is why I love him so. My life. Oh, my life. How about your life? And it in God's hands. Won't you take your life? Put it in God's hands. Just your life. What can you do without the Lord? In God's hand, it's in God's hand. Thank you, Jesus, for being here with me, for loving me, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Let every word that comes out of my mouth be gentle, Lord, and loving. Give me the patience to, to counsel with those who are in need. Jesus, and let me just have my hand in yours all day, Lord. My eyes on you. My feet on your path. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, thank you for prayer. Thank you for, for allowing us to speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, Lord Jesus.